weapons and nuclear weapons and all these other things. And we say to ourselves, man, this is all coming to a head. What's the difference between now and thousands of years ago or hundreds of years ago when they were doing ritualistic beheadings and killing people because they thought they were witches? The difference is technology. They didn't have nuclear weapons thousands of years ago. They didn't have nuclear weapons hundreds of years ago. When they were disemboweling and murdering and or Genghis Khan running around killing millions of people, they didn't have the technology. So that is the difference. I believe that humanity has always had this element of pure evil throughout it. Kind of like a spider web in the in the history books, right? It's just it's just always there. It's always it's always amassing itself. But the difference now and why things are so tense and so absurd is technology. That is the only difference between hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago. Now things have gotten to the point, though, that instead of, wow, you have a tribe that comes in and beheads others or kills you know, their elders or whatever, we have a country that can use nuclear weapon systems and absolutely abolish and destroy the other. Well, that's some of the stuff we're going to get into today. We're also going to talk about the future and 43,381 viruses that have been found in the sewage systems, many of which are unknown to scientists. Some samples found in Pittsburgh, Barcelona, and throughout the world. They had 43,000 viruses that we don't even know about that could potentially lead to resistant bacteria, uh, resistant viruses. The U.S. is finally taking action on antibiotic resistance. Alex has been telling you about that for years. I've been saying that as well. Antibiotic resistant bacteria is probably going to kill millions of people in the near future if we don't do something about it. Advisory Council established on antibiotic resistant bacteria from feedstuffs. And then we're also going to get into some more wild news, such as why you should always trust your gut. New science points to why you should trust your gut and some old science as well. There's a second brain in your stomach. It influences your mood, what you eat, and kinds of diseases you get. Think twice how the gut's second brain influences mood and well-being. We're also going to take your calls on all of these subjects, the decline of America. The number to call in is 1-800-259-9231, 1-800-259-9231. Call in quick because the call board looks like it's already filling up. So we're going to talk about the decline of America. We're also going to talk to Leanne McAdoo. She's going to come in with news in the next segment. And then Darren McBreen at the last segment. So we'll be back on the Alex Jones Show. Again, this is the fourth Overdrive Hour. I'm Anthony Gucciardi sitting in for Alex Jones. Stay tuned. We've got a lot more to break down, including news that Alex did not even get to. Welcome back to the fourth Overdrive Hour of the Alex Jones Show. I'm Anthony Gucciardi hosting for this hour. And I'm joined also by Leanne McAdoo, and she's got some news. We were talking in the last segment. In the next segment, we're going to take your calls, and Kit Daniels is going to come in and talk about some new censorship that he just uncovered. It's actually pretty ridiculous. You're going to see that. want to see that in the next segment. We were talking about a poll, and we're taking your calls next segment on this issue, that 72% of Americans agree America has lost its greatness. We've gone down the tubes. We've lost what was once the American spirit, the American dream, you name it. We have lost it. And... Leanne has just brought in some news, too, that isn't in that same vein. And we're going to break that down. And it goes also with this idea. And Leanne, I want you to comment on this, that we're to blame for it all. We're told that it's our fault. It's not the corporations that pay 0% tax. It's the middle-class Americans that need to pay 50% tax. Right. It's the middle-class Americans that destroyed the economy in 2008 by buying homes when it was really the banks making tons and tons of cash on phony loans that they knew were totally garbage. And it also goes hand in hand with, oh, you know, Target, remember when Target was so PC and they refused to label gender specific items and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it's the middle class Americans that are the jerks and corporations are our friends. Well, listen to this story. Day after employees vote to unionize in Target's, uh, Target announces fleet of robot workers. Wow. Yeah. Just a day after pharmacy workers from a Brooklyn Target store formed a union, the company announced plans to replace employees with ro robot workers in the near future. And they said that was just a micro union they passed, and now they're going to release a fleet of robots. It's well, the corporation screwing us. And I'm not even anti-money or anti-capitalism or anti-corporation, but at the end of the day, we are just being blamed for everything. The government is, is holding hands with the megacorps. They're making billions of dollars consuming us, the consumers, and then we're being blamed for all the economic woes. Everything that's wrong with us, everything that's wrong with the country, we're being blamed for. And that's why 72% of Americans are upset and also upset because they're blamed for it. 
Well, one of the big issues with that is, is a lot of people have grown into this complacency. We are distracted on a daily basis. People think it's so important and so valuable to post their next selfie of, or, you know, flexing at the gym or whatever. That's, that's what America is sort of surrounding itself with presently. And that's all by design, of course. So we're not actually paying any attention to what's going on out there in the world. And I would say that is the only thing that we are at fault. It's just allowing ourselves to become distracted, to become programmed, to become complacent. But, you know, obviously a lot of people listening right now are doing what it takes to, to you know, fight back against this, to wake up against... And, and, you know, like you were saying in the earlier segment with just it's it's always been bad. There's always been evil The difference is technology. And we're allowing this technology to distract us and to program us rather than using this technology, being alive at this time where we have this wonderful technology to be able to use it for good. And of course, you know, we're trying to do that. Other people are trying to do that as well with waking people up. But it's interesting, that thing with Target, um, you know, <laughs> I feel like that's one of the reasons why they want everyone to be gender neutral. So we we are more robotic to destroy the individual, to destroy what is that American entrepreneurial spirit. What what makes this country great is the individual. That's true. They've hijacked entre entrepreneurial spirit. Like mm -hmm. these mega corporations aren't out there doing good, helping people, helping rise humanity up, making money, which is great. You know, making money can be a good thing. They're actually taking it and just ruining the economy and then laughing about it. Yeah. And you know what else is interesting? You mentioned consumption. I think that is the biggest thing. There's three ways that all of us conform to what our reality is and conform to what our individualism is. And the number one thing is the consumption of media. So let's say you log online, you're on Facebook, you're on Twitter, you're on YouTube, whatever it is. You're choosing which media to consume. Right. And it's going to affect you one way or another. You're going to watch shows like this and you're going to get informed. Mm -hmm. And you're actually going to awaken your you know, higher consciousness, whatever you want to call it. You're going to actually figure things out and you know, right. make your brain work. But if you're going to choose to watch CNN or some bogus mainstream media, all you're doing is fueling your subconscious and your ocular system in a different way that's all a bunch of garbage. Right. And then you wonder why you're dumbed down they, and why you don't have the information. You're choosing that consumption level. So just like you choose what you eat, and you can be nutrient deficient if you go to the grocery store and you only buy processed foods, you can be deficient in your head mentally. <laughs> you can be deficient by eating processed news. Right. Exactly. Consuming processed news. Totally. So at the same time, you're going to the grocery store, you wouldn't eat cheese whiz for your whole whole diet. Why would you watch the equivalent of cheese whiz, which is the mainstream media <laughs> or some stupid cheese YouTube whiz media videos all day when you could actually have engaging real content, which is like, well, it, food. exactly. And that's why it is also so important to know that they are controlling your programming, just like Facebook censoring the stories you're getting. That's absolutely right. And next segment, we're going to have Kit Daniels come in and talk a little bit about censorship. And we're going to take your calls on the decline of America and all the subjects we are talking about right now. This is The Alex Jones Show. I'm your host, Anthony Gucciardi. We will be right back for the next long segment. Welcome back to the fourth overdrive hour of The Alex Jones Show. I'm your host, Anthony Gucciardi. And we've got a lot of news to cover. Kit Daniels of Infowars.com, key writer, on the website is also in here to talk about censorship and something that he says Facebook just censored completely, wiped off the grid. And we've got Leanne McAdoo as well. We're going to take your calls on the decline of America and what you see coming. First, I want to say thank you for listening to this program. And it's your support that really helps blast it out on the airwaves and helps the alternative media at real independent media at large actually reach people. That's why Alex just launched his TV network, his satellite to over 400 plus million people, nation and worldwide. And it was because of your support of the InfoWars Money Bomb. Right now at InfoWarsStore.com and InfoWarsLife.com, to say thank you, Brain Force and DNA Force are both 20% off and Child Ease is back in stock. Now, Brain Force is probably, probably my top product choice right now. Survival Shield X2 is always the flagship product, but Brain Force, I'm on it right now every single day. I take two in the morning and it's amazing. It really, really is amazing and it just helps me form sentences better. Just It works. Here's a couple of reviews that you can see on InfoWarsLife.com. This is from Lacey in Rochester. She says, thank you for making this great product. Ever since I've been taking these, I've been getting a lot more things done at home and at work. Procrastination is not an issue when I have this brain candy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Maybe we should call it brain candy. And thank you, Lacey. 
Control Alt Delete. I like the name from Canada. It says after taking Brain Force first thing in the morning, my thought processes become precise and crisp. True mental illumination. It feels like adrenaline for the soul. This, this is poetic. I know, seriously, but no, it really does though. It's an amazing product. Get Brain Force at Infowars Life. Dot com. It has alpha GCP, GCP, it has L-theanine, it has yerba mate extract. It's the real deal. Try it, and you will not be disappointed. Anyway, we're going to open up the phone lines and take your calls in a minute. But first, we've got Kit Daniels, and he ran in here and said, hey, Facebook just censored. Is it your article they censored? Yes, absolutely. It's uh, the article entitled Pope Kid, Amnesty Activist Stage PR Stunt to Promote Illegal Immigration. Now, I post this article about 1245 in the afternoon. And then I shared it on Facebook, and, you know, of course, that generates, you know, traffic to the website, and people go to see our own Facebook page and say, oh, there's an article up. So they go to the article, and they start sharing it on themselves right off the article. So last time I checked, it had about 1,500 shares on Facebook directly from Infowars.com. That went down to zero. So I had one of our programmers to take a look at it, and he said, there's nothing wrong that I can tell on our website. And so I tried to get our social media guy to share the article again, and he wouldn't share the media, the meta tag data. data. And for, furthermore, the the post that I shared of the article about one o'clock p.m. it's completely gone. They deep six that article entirely. Now I know there's been a glitch on Facebook, but this is the only article that we've had problems with today so far. So I'm kind of wondering, you know, I know that Mark Zuckerberg, you know, the CEO of Facebook, he's already he's always pushed pro amnesty. Mm -hmm. Then you got the media saying that the pontiff, Pope Francis, can do more right now than Obama ever could because he's got the audience. And you got Shepard Smith saying, oh, well, we can't. And the Pope, what the Pope's saying is not political, even though it is political, right. obviously. <laughs> so they're like using the pontiff to push a this pro-amnesty open borders agenda while saying it's not political. So, right. you know, it's, it wouldn't surprise me if they're suppressing the article because you got Zuckerberg that's completely pro-amnesty open borders, whatnot. And they don't want you talking bad about the Pope when he's pushing their agenda. Right. So, you know, I used to be skeptical about Facebook censorship, right? Because I always like to say, well, you know, people, there's there's so much stuff out there. Say, they say, oh, it's censored. You're like, really? Is it just a messed up URL or something like that? And a lot of the times it is. But I actually had, if you remember, I had my article censored. And it wasn't even that hardcore. It was about the Dark Act banning GMO labeling in the United yeah, States. Yeah. And I posted it on my site, Natural Society, and Infowars, and both were simultaneously banned. And when you posted it, it's, it actually had a pop-up that came up and said, actually, you're not allowed to post this on Facebook. Yeah. And we did everything. We fixed every possible component that could be a technical issue mm -hmm. and resubmitted it 50 times. Only when we changed the title and changed the image and changed the URL, but with the same exact text and everything like that, was it allowed to be posted for about 15 minutes, and then again it was banned. So I've actually experienced this firsthand, and it is legitimate. This, you know, yeah. So I... I a year ago, I might have said, well, let's look at this. But I have actually found it to be 100% verified at this cases. point. Facebook has been caught censoring things. And it wouldn't surprise me either. And it's also interesting. It also goes to show the Pope is supposedly a Christian figure. And what does the media hate more than Christian figures, right? They, they, <laughs> they act like they hate Christian values. Oh, these bigots, you know, how dare they? You know, we're so PC. The Christians, oh, they, they hate the gays and all this stuff, right? But then it's like the Pope comes to Congress. Oh, let's let him get broadcast. Yeah, well, He's not political. He's amazing. His holiness, the pontiff. And they uh, they just worship him like an angelic being. And he goes to Congress and says all these things that they would have never accepted. Right? right. They would have never allowed. But you're not allowed to criticize the Pope. He's a religious figure. They're supposed to hate that. I bet they wouldn't let Jesus go on the air that much. They, you know, they would not let Jesus address Congress. If Jesus came back today, they would say, no, we're, this, he's a bigot. He's a jerk. You know, we're not letting him in Congress, but the Pope can go. What's really telling is the fact that Obama, every chance he gets, he attacks Christianity. It was like, I think in April, he went to a, like a, a Christian Easter breakfast. And of course, he attacks yeah. Christianity. Right. But when it comes to the Pope. He's shaking his hands. Oh, yeah, come to the White House. We're buddies and this and that. It's right. like he doesn't attack Thanks the Christianity when it comes to Pope. Well, that's, of course, because he is pushing his agenda and agreeing with him. Oh, well, there's a globalist agenda. That's right. <laughs> so we're going to go to some calls. And let's go ahead and go straight to Walt in Michigan. Walt, what's on your mind? Uh, good evening, gentlemen. I want to bring up a couple things that uh, always kind of gets overlooked. Greg Galuzzo, when Obama was in Chicago was his mentor. And Greg Aluzzo was a Jesuit priest. We now have a Jesuit, former Jesuit, is now Pope. 
and the Jesuit oath, the extreme oath the Jesuits,